Hello, welcome back to Monster Transmissions. This is Kurt. We're in Kurt's Corner. We're going to go over some technical data referring to a Ford AOD transmission. Now, Ford came out with a linkage system in their transmissions that are unique in the fact that you cannot replace them from the outside of the unit. You will have to drop the pan, remove the linkage assembly to change the linkage. Ford also offered up to 16 different lever arms for an AOD transmission. So obviously there's going to be a lot of variables depending if it's two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, or other applications uh, depending if it's a Mustang or a pickup truck, whatever it may be. So they had different linkage arms. Here are the linkages that we're referring to. This happens to be one that's most common. It's in, let's say, a Ford Mustang. And basically it's a mechanical linkage that your shift cable or shift mechanical arm will move the lever arm. This mechanism here is the detent or TV rod, okay? This is a factory setup, and this arm basically, when you accelerate, will pull this arm and will command the, will adjust the line pressure and then tell it when to shift. So these two mechanisms both have to be removed to replace it with this shift lever arm. This arm obviously is different than the, than the factory one. You see the, the angle on it, because this is gonna go into a truck application and we need to replace this linkage, exchange this one for this lever arm, okay? This unit would be the one removed from your original transmission if it's different than the one we ship you. Again, because we test every transmission, they all have this style linkage or a brand new lever arm installed um, and it's usually in the up position like you see here. Uh, some lever rod arms are up and some are 180 degrees and they're facing down. So again, I can show you how to just adjust it to the other clock position and or replace the entire linkage. So the first thing we're going to do is the transmissions that we ship you will have some fluid in them from testing. So you will need to remove the pan on the transmission and there will be some fluid in there. So we're going to remove this lever arm. This is the TV cable arm. And it's simple. It only goes on in one, one or two positions. It's either this direction or upside down. But all TV lever rods are facing the up position. There, again, there's different style TV rod arms as well. You have to reuse this from your original transmission. So now that that is removed, what we will do is now we will roll the transmission over. This one has already been pre-drained. And we will show you how to replace the linkage. Okay. We have the pan off on this AOD transmission. I'm going to remove the filter just for visibility for you. But you don't necessarily need to remove this to change the linkage. There's two bolts here and one here. They have an eight millimeter head on them. So we take the filter off. Make sure you don't lose the, uh, the gasket. And now we have the valve body exposed with the linkage system that we're going to be working on. Which first few things I want to point out. On the factory application, this, this is the TV rod inside the transmission. So when you actuate it outside with your TV cable, throttle valve cable, this shaft pushes in this TV valve itself. The more pressure you apply to the valve, the more it presses in, then the higher your line pressure will be. So this actually adjusts your line pressure, or the TV circuit oil pressure is adjusted by this rod outside the tranny which goes inside to this part. Uh, Monster adds when we rebuild our units and an extra component to prevent this shaft from going behind your TV rod because this bracket will fit between the valve body casting and the valve itself and when that happens it will lock this valve in a position and then the common complaint is the transmission will not shift and your TV rod does not spring back and as you notice if you put pressure on it and you release it, the valve will spring that valve back. If it does not, that means this mechanism is locked up and that's a problem. Now we're moving on to the actual replacement of the linkage. Right here is a tensioner. This tensioner is what actually holds what we call the rooster tail, the linkage assembly. So when you hear a transmission click, it's actually clicking over this shaft mechanism. Okay, when it's all the way in this position, this position here would be park, and then of course you got reverse, neutral, drive, and so forth. So 
To replace a linkage, the first item to remove would be this bolt that holds the tensioner on. That's an eight millimeter bolt. Just remove it. This does not involve replacing the entire valve body. All you have to do to remove is that one bolt off the valve body. Now the next mechanism we need to remove would be the actual nut that's down in here. There's a nut, it's a 13 16 in size, and you have to release the tension on that, which will release the tension off the shaft. Once you've loosened that nut, you notice that this mechanism is coming loose off the shaft. Okay, and the next item to remove will be this roll pin. This roll pin fits into the casting of the case and there's a slot in the linkage shaft itself right here that this roll pin slides into and holds it in position so it does not come out of the case and prevents it from sliding back and forth. That actually is the guide and holds that linkage system in place. So we'll remove this roll pin out of the case, you use a pair of cutting dice and needle nose pliers, and you just pull the pin out. Once that pin is removed, now the linkage will pull, pull out. What you do is you finish taking off the nut. As you notice, the nut is now removed. The TV rod is, is here. The shaft actually slides through the center of the linkage arm. So you actually remove, slide the linkage arm out of the case. Okay, once it's removed, the TV rod, as you know, sticks through the case here. This is the new linkage that we're going to install, and this happens to be in the down position for this application. You slide this over the TV shaft. You may have to depress the valve to have the TV linkage back in alignment. Line the rooster tail up with the linkage. And you'll notice that on the linkage itself, there are two flat lands. These flat lands line up with the flat spots on your linkage. So you can either put the linkage down or in the up position. The lands are equal on both sides. So you can put it either direction. So you have to notice when you remove your linkage from the original transmission, which direction the linkage is facing. So once you have this in the case, you can align the rooster tail with it and you can reinstall the nut. Okay now that we have the replacement shaft installed we had to line it up with the rooster tail with those two flat lands that I was referring to. We tighten the nut down again that's a 13 16 now before you tighten it all the way and shove the linkage in you need to ensure that one that the TV mechanism is lined up and will move this valve and that this shaft for the rooster tail aligns up with the valve and the valve body. And the valve and the valve body have two different areas that this can fit. It needs to be in the most forward one. Obviously if you miss the valve completely, you will have no nothing, no movement of the valve and the car can start and drive, reverse, anywhere. So you have to ensure that this shaft is in the correct clock position. So you line the two off and slide them in and make sure that it moves that valve and that your TV system is attached and then there's a spring behind that was actually on the back of the TV valve rod and that spring will pop off and what you have to do you have to pull this linkage spring around before we attach the spring we need to reinstall the roll pin the roll pin fits into the case which will hold the linkage in alignment and you can make sure that you may have to play with it up and down a little just to ensure that it's in the right place and then tap it into place. You don't want to tap it too far down because if you have to remove it, it's very difficult if it's down inside the casting. So leave it about even with the edge of the pan. You want some of that sticking up so you can remove it in case you have to at a later time. Then ensure that the valve rod is aligned with the shaft of linkage. That is correct. So now we need to install the spring. 
the spring will unwind and coil around the linkage. So you pull the spring around and it actually rests against a place on the shift plate of the valve body. There's a little V cut there and that spring mechanism lines in there. And now you have tension on the TV system and the linkage. It's actually pushing against this valve. Okay. So now that everything is lined up, the spring has tension, the TV connector rod is actually in front of the valve, not behind it and not in front of it. So that circuit is working and your valve is correctly aligned here. The roll pin is in place. Now we can reinstall the tensioner. It does not have to be in any specific place. It just has a roll bearing on the end and it has to line up with the detents on the rooster tail. So hold it aligned, tighten that down, and now the linkage is reinstalled and you can test it by checking to make sure the valve is moving properly, it's in the right slot, and it goes into park. You can also verify that your TV mechanism is attached correctly before you put the pan and filter on. If you depress it and it springs back and it's not wedged, then the TV circuit is in the correct position and will work. Now we'll reinstall the filter, ensure that the gasket, if you removed it, is greased and put back in place. You install the bolts, then reinstall the pan gasket and the pan and tighten the pan bolts down and now your linkage has changed. This same process can be used and from an AOD to an AODE or 4R70W. It's the same principle. They all use the roll pins and a nut, except they don't have a spring tensioner for a TV cable. There's no TV cable and electronic transmission. But the same principle will apply on those transmissions as well. If you have any further questions, you can see us here at Monster Transmissions. Give our customer service reps a call and we'll be able to help you with any questions you may have on any transmission you purchase from Monster Transmission. Thanks and have a great day.